Hi everyone, thank you for watching. If you like this channel and you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. It's completely free and it really helps the channel to grow and to thrive. Thank you. All right, here we go. Yes, we were talking and I had not pressed the record button and Lena said some great things. So I'm going to ask her <laughs> to, to repeat them. It's always so, hard to reproduce the pearls, isn't it? Exactly. Um, but um, I was saying generally, I think many people are not worried so much about Kamala and the popular vote. She has momentum. People are, are ripe for a change. That's all good. But for those of us who don't live in the United States, the actual mechanisms of the democracy are so bizarre and complicated. So there's the Electoral College, of course. There's, um, but more than that, we know the GOP is desperate and they will stop at nothing. So eternal vigilance is required. Yes, yes, that's true. That's 100% uh, true. Although, you know, I'll tell you, uh, not every system, to give you an example, Canada, Canada is a more liberal country than the U.S. by pretty much all accounts. And I noticed that in the last election, Trudeau, the liberal, was elected, but he didn't win the popular vote, strictly speaking. Uh, mm. It was because of the, the way they subdivide the seats. So it's fairly common in democracies to have these strange patterns where it's not every person for one vote. And in terms of the US, it is, I would say, tilted too much to equalize something that needs less equalizing. For example, to have two senators in Idaho or South Dakota and have two senators in California is pretty preposterous. There's no question. On, on that level, it's true. Yes. But if you look at the counterpoint, California today has a bigger economy than most countries. You know, it's a state mm. that is enormous. Now, the, California is really blue. If California grows and grows and grows, they can decide the election all by themselves. So then <laughs> there's that as well to consider. So, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in American history, they were trying to make sure that the people with property and more power and so forth had more of a say. This has always been the, you know, the, the hidden truth underneath it all, so that it would not be, you know, the populace at large could take over and dictate matters. So it's, yeah. it's, yeah. I think most of the things were well intentioned at the time. You know, sure. for sure. And Australia, I may be wrong about this, but I don't think so. I think we're the only country that has compulsory voting. Oh, that's a good one. That's good. And yeah. when I was a young radical, you know, at, you know, at 18 and 20, I'd refuse to vote, you know, because we were part of the thinking at the time, if voting could change anything, it would be illegal. That was the slogan, <laughs> right? <laughs> and there's some truth in that to this day. However, compulsory voting, I think, I'm now a proponent, works because it, it forces people to make the effort and go along because there's no real punishment. So if you don't vote, you'll get a letter in the post after a few weeks saying it's been noted you didn't vote and you can write back and give them a reason and that's it, or you'll be fined like $50 and if you don't pay it, no one follows it up. So I think it only works like that, if you know what I mean. Like it's not as though you're, you're threatened with some huge arm of the state or anything. It's a notional idea to get everybody there. And I think it's good. It's good because because in the US, I heard someone describe this, someone who's really studying the statistics of all the you know the data the polls all that and and this woman who's quite expert too at this and she was saying close to half the country they don't know what's happening and they don't care about what's happening and they don't know and they don't contribute to that and decision. they don't contribute 
Right, which is, and, and Trump's strategy has been to try to mobilize these dormant voters by outraging them about, you know, mm. really emotional issues that actually have very little effect, you know, to put up ads in football games and say, all the trans people are coming to do whatever and everybody's going to be turned into a, you know, there's going to be surgery to your children. This is all BS made up, but it sounds like, well, that wouldn't be good. And the whole idea is to get someone to vote for the first time. And, and he doesn't seem to have any interest at all in convincing any more women. He's trying to mobilize more men. So yes. it's definitely a gender battle. And that's in the astrology. I mean, there's no question there's this. Yeah, of it, oh, it's definitely a gender battle. Yeah. There's no doubt. And to me, it's not just about men and women. It's about toxic masculinity versus humane, contributing, sane, supportive masculinity. <laughs> True. No, that's, that's exactly that's... it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Although you could, you could say if you were being, you know, just loose and broad to say that the men that are doing that are on women's side, essentially. They're, they're saying Absolutely. We, we support. And that shouldn't be a complicated space to be in. No, I, I don't think so either. No, no, because, I mean, the alternative is, is despicable, you know, to hear the, oh. the, the, the garbage that they're, they're uh, spouting. I mean, Tucker Carlson with the daddy's coming home to spank the teenage daughter, not the teenage guy, you know, just as likely <laughs> to do <laughs> what he was saying. But yeah. it's a very targeted thing. Like, let's get the, let's get the bros really angry, you know, about this. So, <laughs> yes. And speaking of garbage, it's been used a lot. So, Trump himself referred to the whole country as a garbage can, I think, recently. Um, and as we speak, he's giving a reprisal of the 1938 Nazi gathering in Madison Square Garden. And a few things are going on there already. So one, I'd ask everyone to have a look at this footage. So there's a Korean um, comedian. And he came out, Not, no, he's not part of the official thing. This was milling around with people. First. And I think some maggers actually thought it was Kim Jong-un. But in any event, he was saying, death to democracy, right? And maggers were applauding. Can you actually, but you think there is a flaw, but you'd be wrong. No, you know, and, and it, it's been, you know, it, it, the thing about it is you get, some of this can sound anecdotal, but it's disturbing. And I believe it's in, I, I think it's in my state. I'm pretty sure there's a part of the state that is very red. In fact, one of the worst in the country mm -hmm. where I live, it's blue and it's so blue that it overcomes the red votes in the, yeah. that part of the state. But I saw the Republican Party in that part of the state saying, they didn't want to do democracy anymore. They've said it openly. Exactly. Like, to a certain extent, people have been fixated on Trump being the nightmare, Trump being the problem, get rid of Trump, end of problem. That's not what we're looking at. The genie is out of the bottle. There's that... Um, latent authoritarian tendency that has been awoken and people feel justified in saying the most outrageous thing and they're not committed to democracy, it would appear. They're literally not. Well, and you know why? Mm. Because they're losing. It's really simple. Yeah, exactly. They're having problems with winning elections, so the solution is to get rid of the system that means I'm losing Damn, why didn't I think of that, Andre? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's pretty obvious. So, but, but see, the thing is, this is where history, people say, you know, the adage that says, history does not repeat, but it rhymes. So when did we see this before? You, you said it, 19, late 1930s, 1940, there was a Nazis, in fact, it was worse than now. In the Second World War, there were people like Lindbergh and even Henry Ford was doing an anti-Semitic thing, and they were really into the Nazi message, but that didn't work out. And if you go back another 80 years, which is the, you know, these are the Neptune cycles, it was the Civil War where, what was the problem? They wanted to not just keep slavery in the South, they wanted to expand the slavery. 
That was what mm. the conflict was. Lincoln said, okay, you can keep it there, but you can't expand it. They wanted to make it whole country and go further. They wanted to make an empire. So, but that also didn't work out. So then mm. here we are today. You know, yes, it's true, but uh, I remain confident that we can squeak out another victory in the mm. sense that, in the sense that, you know, in the end, they are following a fool who has no discipline, who would be, if, if Trump were smart, actually were smart, and knew how to control himself, yeah. he would be a very dangerous candidate. But oh, they, were saying, yeah. they were saying today in the, in the New York Times, I just caught, I didn't read the whole thing, but they were saying, just saw the byline, his disinhibition is his greatest strength and his greatest weakness. Yes, because he cannot, I think that sums it up. Yeah, he can't hold himself to, you know, from, it'd be smart at this point to keep the message steady and clear and stay out of all the insults and stay out of, the latest was what, that he was saying he wants to be a whale psychiatrist? He told Joe Rogan. <laughs> I missed the whale. You know, Joe Rogan at one point said, you know, this weave is getting really wide. <laughs> <laughs> we need to bring the weave back in. I mean, it's like watching a comedy show. So I think yeah. this helps the cause because, yes, it would be uh, far more dangerous, I think, if you were... A good oh, heaven forbid he was efficient. And because we saw it happen, uh, you know, his first people were the ones who prided themselves in being the grown-ups in the room. You know, they would control Trump. That failed. Then you go down to the next era who were more afraid of him in a way, didn't want to upset him, so let lots of bad things happen. They couldn't handle it or were expunged. And so now he's on his 45th level of <laughs> campaign advice. And there's this pattern. It's funny what gives people, I won't say the word on, <laughs> on your channel, but what actually irritates and turns people off are not ideological things. It's things like the buses not turning up in Coachella and not being able to get home. That's true. And because I'm keeping half an eyeball on this Madison Square Garden stuff, um, there are no public loos, there are no porter loos, crowd of about 10,000, nowhere to go. That's the sort of thing that I think undermines and gives people cause for thought who don't question the, the patent ugliness out of his mouth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and I, uh, 100%. Uh, it, it's one way or the other. It looks like it's tight, it's marginal. The question is, which way does it tilt? I continue to say because of the patterns, both historical but astrological historical as well, that this election, it's the it's a, most more than anything else, a gender battle. And I think the numbers favor women because I don't think it can make up the gap. I think the amount, mm -hmm. the tsunami that is being mobilized, and, you know, and again, for something they did that is along the same lines, male versus female, because this was the primarily male Supreme Court doing something to women, you know, and deciding, oh. well, I'm going to this, I'm going to take away your right. That's not a good idea. Uh, oh. in, in a in an electorate where you 54%, I believe, are women. And oh. women tend to organize better, they're more committed, more responsible, so they will follow through. Whereas men, Sometimes they follow through and sometimes they don't. So I would trust yeah, them less. Yeah, and talk large and don't necessarily turn up at the voting. Precisely, yeah. So I, my suspicion is that the numbers tilt enough in her direction to win. Now, I hopefully it'll be even better than that. Some intuitives feel yeah. that she wins comfortably. I'll take it, but I'm not sure about that. That's the part yeah. that I, I'm not sure about. Um, but also, then the next question becomes down ballot yeah down ballot that's another issue because it's looking like just using common sense that uh typically well the catastrophe would be if trump were to win because they would probably win the senate and the house that to me is extremely unlikely the uh kamala harris and the house to me are the most uh certain the senate is very tricky because i looked at it 
Well, we need, this is again where some intuitive see Colin Allred defeating Ted Cruz, but it's Texas. Texas is yeah. very complicated, very complicated. So and you need you need that kind of thing, even just to keep it, uh, to keep it even. So you could have Tim Walls be the, the uh, uh, tie-breaking vote, you know, because it's what they have now. Mm. And, uh, you know, even though it may seem in a way unfair that, it's even in one party controls, you've got to keep the control any way you can. Well, for one thing, if the Senate is not won by Democrats, how will you pass any legislation to Oh, look, fix exactly. Anything? That's what I mean. People fixate on the first sort of strand of what's going on and the real issues are behind that. You know? Yes, exactly. Exactly. So it's, yeah, uh, if they fail to get Congress or the Senate, nothing happens because bipartisanship is dead and that's also um, become a problem in Australia it's problem in the UK it's different I think in Europe because they're much more likely in most European countries to have to wheel and deal behind the scenes and work with um, three or more parties whereas when you're left with the two party system no because, and I'm old enough to remember the difference, is for countries to move ahead, you need bipartisan agreement on the major sort of tripod of a society, which is basically health, education, energy. You could add defence to that, but they usually get together on defence. So it's those three and there needs to be 20 year plans to transition to more sustainable everything, et cetera, et cetera, that regardless of who gets in, those things are locked in place. Now, we're a million miles in Australia from our major parties agreeing on that. And it shows. So everyone limps on their three or four year cycle of us covering and just doing their time because now people go into politics just as a profession, you know, yeah. as opposed to being a public servant. 100%. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Although this is the thing again, that, that I, I still see comments on my channel. They're both the same, please. Okay. So uh -huh. there's no way, I mean, Kamala Harris, she's not, by, not perfect. Nobody's perfect, but same as Joe Biden, they are I don't know, what do you want to say, half, quarter, third, two thirds, <laughs> public servant, and then some other portion that you don't like yeah. in it for themselves. Trump is 98.1% for himself and 2% <laughs> yeah. for some other crook that he's trying to help. I mean, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, <laughs> exactly. There is zero. Pay. He wouldn't understand the term. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, everything is relative. This is the thing that people want some kind of, you know, utopian perfection. There's no such thing. Just like... I always say to people, there are two items on the menu. Vote for one or the other. If you vote any, in any other way, you're helping one or the other too. That's playing chess. Mm -hmm. Don't vote for yeah. Jill Stein. Don't vote for Ralph no. Nader and elect George W. Bush. Yeah. Don't do that. No. <laughs> but it no. seems to be elusive. I've had people angry at me for saying that. You know, I said that in mm -hmm. 2016, uh, voting for Trump was not a good vote and not voting was equally bad because- It was a vote. That, not voting is a vote. Exactly. And there was a huge undervote. Uh, Hillary received 63 million votes and Obama had received 69. What happened to those 6 million people? So they were all excited yeah. about Obama. Mm. Well, what, Hillary's not going to do the same? Hillary might have done more than Obama. I mean, they're both yeah. on the same wavelength, you know. So matter of fact, I'm nearly sure that Hillary is a lot more hawkish than Obama. I don't think Putin would have gone into oh, Ukraine. I put money on that. As an example, yeah. So, so it's yeah. it's it shows you that people, you know, get these ideas in their heads, and then they vote against their own interests and and complicate matters even more. But mm. the other thing you said too, though, this is where you see it, it's also a world condition. We've been in this thing for the last 10, 15 years, ever since Pluto entered Capricorn in 08, There's mm. been this rise of uh, authoritarianism, you know, the interest in that mm. and more and more problems in democracies. You mentioned Australia, but you said Europe, I'll give you an example in, in Spain, my home, home country, they're apparently doing well economically relative to the rest of Europe, but there's a lot of dissension and they have multiple parties and the 
party in charge had to make a deal with the uh, separatists in Catalonia and the, you know, everybody's mad at everybody. And oh. I have a cousin there who said to me, you know, you, you think you have a problem in the US. It's the same here. She said the Republican side here, the conservative party behaves like your Republicans. If they're not in charge, they keep complaining that something's wrong, that everybody's cheating. So they're doing, she, she said, it almost sounds like yeah. the way Vikings behave. You know, if we don't take it by force, then it's not valid. Uh, you yeah. know, and then you, you've heard about France, there, there are problems in Germany, uh, everywhere there, there have been problems. So and I Israel, think it's a time when leaders need to take some of these huge structural issues and you've got to handle them in different ways in different situations. But as an example, I'd like to hear Kamala say in the next eight days or whatever, look at this guy. If he wins, it's a full and fair election. If he doesn't, it's rigged. He's like a 10-year-old with the birthday prize. Mocking can sometimes be much more effective it's true. Yes. than a point-by-point -point thing. Everyone can actually identify with that example. Whether they want to or not, it actually goes in because it's a living reality. I think it would be so effective. And also yeah. it has the double advantage of anticipating the crap. So when he does come out and go bleep, 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 somehow people are subconsciously primed. Good point. Very good point. Yeah, I think you're 100%. To, in her defense, I think, I'm not sure this is totally true, but I think they've been cherry picking some of his mistakes when he, because he's, he's so disinhibited. You know, he went on Joe Rogan mm. and he said, uh, when I lost, and he, I didn't lose, he said right away. So yes. he's yeah, Joe caught. Rogan didn't know what to do. <laughs> He's been caught so many times, which, by the way, Zach Smith can use that in the trial. He can say, this guy knows he lost. He's just playing Yeah, 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 yeah. So and they're going to put it in ads, you know, and, and those ads will say, like what you said. I mean, I would say, look, it's got like a child, right? He knows, but he's telling you already to prepare the, you know, the field. You know, he, people say all the time, he's such a unpredictable. He's not unpredictable. He's totally predictable. No, he's you know the he's opposite of unpredictable. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm with you 100%. I hope that she takes advantage and that they run, use all that money that they've accumulated to yeah. carpet bomb the, the, you know, the undecided people, you know, it's remarkable, mm. but there are people like that, that I guess they're weighing, you know, who. But it also moves the middle a bit because people don't want to identify with the clown. That's a right? good point. Yeah. And I don't think he's... Yes, people have shredded him on various sort of platforms and things, but not enough. And it's because it's a damn issue, which is this is very serious. This is the end of time. And it is. <laughs> but sometimes the light throwaway is better than a quiver of arrows. You know? You're right. No, you're 100% right. And she has done some of that and... It's such a great point, and it would be a good way now to gauge her political instincts. If she, she, I think she's a lot better at this than people give her credit for. Oh, she has learning this, curve. Yeah, very quick. So she oh. may tap in and realize, that, you know, because see, this is his genius. And that's he knows. where she has got cachet mm -hmm. and gravitas. She doesn't move off script often or for long, but just letting go sometimes and the eye rolls and the the stuff can say an enormous amount. That's when people started to warm to her. People are suspicious of perfect. That was part of the problem with Hillary because she reminded everyone of the hall monitor or something at school. There was a very uptight thing about Hillary. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, you're gonna and I had that. to be moved to the Kamalik. Camp. I wasn't a natural ally, and I'm sure I'm not alone there. It was like, oh, really? You know, the prosecutor. Oh. Uh, but she has done brilliantly for being thrown in at the deep end, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, exactly. So it's in a, uh, I think it's, it's within her reach. And, you know, yeah. It, 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 in fact, I would, I'm going to guess that she will do what you're what you're saying, some version of that. 
in both in person but in ads as well because yeah you take what these guys are saying and you throw it back at them like for example that's i thought it was the secret that's i thought it was the secret so rich when mcconnell and jd vance do this thing and they say that kamala has to stop kamala harris has to with stop with the in, inflammatory rhetoric about how he's a fascist you know and the comeback to that is no actually i didn't say it general kelly said it so why don't you attack him and by the way then 10 other generals came in to say the same thing so yeah. which is it here i'm just parroting yeah. what they're you know and, and by the way then i would say i trust them infinitely more than i trust you are or the orange guy you know that is for sure and on, on what who's telling the truth yeah. so on the other side of all this let's take the moment and assume Kamala wins. Uh, in terms of what would that government look like when it's back to the culture wars, how do you try and roll back some of this insanity? Well, the only, the only, the only drawback to making a comment on that, wouldn't it be that, as we said a few minutes ago, the Senate and the House, if the intuitive readers are correct that all three branches are democratic, that's a very different world than if even one of those. It is a different world, but even that's, and I, let's hope, you know, <laughs> and they can bring in all sorts of legislation and stuff. But I think what Democrats and our Labor don't do well is, and we've talked about this before on your channel, the demonising of immigrants is an ongoing story. Doesn't matter who's in, they're either demonised a lot or not so much, but a lot, not so much. It never gets put to bed. People don't realise if I want to retire with a pension in Australia, and we've got a very low birth rate, um, we need immigration to keep our lifestyle going an argument that should be made in the UK and everywhere else, and certainly the US. Right? Um, so some of these fundamentals have got locked in a cycle. And I, I think small criticism of Obama, he had eight years. I would have liked to have seen more done in the public education sector. A democracy can only function with a good public education system. So even if you leave school at whatever year, you at least have the foundations of literacy, numeracy, critical thinking, something that's absent, you know, <laughs> largely. Um, so you shouldn't have to get a college degree to be able to make some sensible decisions. And I think that's a major problem in the US. It's true. And if you want to hear the counter argument to that, or rather the explanation, it's because Obama went all in in the poker game to reform the healthcare system and he achieved that. Mm. But once he achieved that, he lost the House and yeah. later he lost the Senate. And so one of the things, the Republican Party was in a panic about Obama because he was such a popular transformational figure, their oh. attitude was oppose everything he brings to the table. Yes. So once yeah. we reached 2010, 2010 to 2016, they were not going to let anything happen. And if you say, well, it was yeah. Obama's fault, he couldn't do a damn thing. And now something like this could repeat. You know, you could elect a really good person. Yeah, there's yeah, no way yeah. to function because the, the president can do executive orders, but they, they're, they're removed and they're not permanent. And they can also be challenged in court. It turns into a major problem if the House and Senate don't agree and, and pass legislation. So this is the problem that the US, as I see it, is in this era mirroring the Civil War and mirroring to some extent the Second mm -hmm. World War where the country is very divided. And so you can think, you know, because it's not the president's fault when gasoline goes up and things like that. This is crazy. People... No, know, I, and I'm a little bit worried because Kamala's... Um, talking about challenging the price of groceries and stuff, and I, I can see why, you know, like, I get it. However, in the real world, groceries go up and up and up because 
the price of gasoline goes up and energy and transport and wages costs and your groceries will cost more four years from now than they do today. That is a modern capitalist economy. I know what she's saying in the sense, and she has a record on it in California, going for price gouges, you know. I think that's an epic position to take. Go for it, by all means, because, you know, the duopolies and monopolies do mm -hmm. that, that stuff. But you have to explain very simply that things will cost more in four years from now. However, we are going to really do our best. To yes, get that and down. It's the I'm a bit worried that it's going to be the promise that she gets nailed to the wall on in three years from now. Before she said groceries would go down, you know. Yeah, good point. I think yeah, it doesn't good. matter now between now and next Tuesday, mm -hmm. but it does matter as soon as she gets in to really just clarify that. Very true. Yeah, no, very true. It's it's uh, exactly because in a capitalist society you'd have to show very clearly that there was gouging and it wasn't because 20%, there was a 20% uh, increase in costs for companies so they're simply passing it on. So that's totally mm. true. Uh, if it's real price, price gouging, then maybe you could make a case. Otherwise, no, because uh, that's the way the a capitalist system works, including that, by the way, which isn't mentioned enough, wages rose by more than inflation rose in this country. So... Mm. A person can say, I'm paying more for X. Yes, but you're also getting paid more. Not everybody's getting paid more. It's part of a role is to it equalize is. that. But overall, there's been an increase in wages of more than what inf inflation has risen. So the companies yes. have, you know, the corporations have paid out more. Uh, they haven't just just made more money and just engaged in price gouging. So you have to be fair about that. But it's a, it's a political message. And, uh, you, you know, you hope that, she finds a way to make some progress in that respect, right? Yes, all, all you and can. I think she will because she's chosen it to flag it mm -hmm. and she's obviously proud of what she did achieve and it absolutely needs to happen. Tackle price gouging. I'm just suggesting a little bit of distance from that and the grocery bill down the road. Um, I just yeah. don't want to see her handicapped by... Um, people misinterpreting what yeah, well, she's saying. I mean, you know, it's totally true that one of the things that Trump has done, and in a way, you know, when he was president, and in a way, it's it's blatant pandering, and it's not really the true job of a president to do that. But Obama did very little of this when he was when to get there. He was he's a brilliant orator. He's an amazing preacher, clear, clear message. Then he doesn't say anything, so he's not really selling what he's doing. You have to condition people. You have to let them know yes. what's going on and be out there. It's part of the job because people are not in touch enough, and so they just say, oh, the price up, it's your fault. You know, There's got to be something there that keeps people informed, and you know that's what Trump was doing while he was president. He was doing rallies in the middle of his presidency, which is not really the approach, but maybe he's smarter than we think in that sense, right? He knows that repetition, conditioning is really helpful, you know, to, to keep people. Yeah, going. sure is. Yeah. So, do, so, Andre, what do you think with the Supreme Court? What uh, do you see on the horizon for that? You know, I don't have a lot of visibility on the Supreme Court other than to say that I do know that in the near term, Alito and Thomas, who were both riding high, at the time of Dobbs, are facing some difficult times in 25 and 26 and 27. That's clear to me. And that could be yeah. from things not going as well as they want or and or health issues, for example, because Thomas has already been in the hospital and he's getting older. So that's a possibility as well. Beyond that, I don't have any birth times. And I don't see, other than I can see in Kavanaugh's chart, he's under a lot of pressure right now. Yeah. I don't know what the reason is, though. He's feeling rattled and out of sorts. I think they're looking into his thing. Last night I heard mm. they were looking into his, mm. how he was uh, confirmed and all that. But I, I don't know too much more. Do you, do you feel like the Supreme Court will be reformed in a meaningful way in the near term? I have to think so. <laughs> because 
It doesn't matter what else happens. It's true. Actually, actually, it doesn't matter. If you've got an unreliable and arguably corrupt Supreme Court that's primed for a theocracy, you cannot actually function. I see it as numero uno, <laughs> That there's not just something in time we need to look at this. It needs to be because it is crippling the country. I agree. Yeah, I agree because, yeah, well, I mean, look, the, the, the capper, to me, they were, yes, they were tilting to the right and they were making decisions sometimes that seemed to be more, more, uh, more balanced. But the thing that they did with Trump was this thing with the immunity is just bizarro. When you, when you read yes. through that, most people with a legal brain and any person, if you explain it to them, it just makes no sense because it's essentially saying he could go and do something insane with an insane and demented, like that Clark guy thought that Italian satellites and thermostats were stealing votes. He was going to be yeah. the next attorney general. So then, I mean, anything goes and that's on the mild side. What if he commits a crime? In league with yeah. the with the uh, justice department, and they said, "Oh, that's fanciful. That's fanciful thinking." Not with uh, this yeah. guy. <laughs> no, 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 no. And with Merrick Garland, I, I don't want to just slam Merrick Garland. I think he had a very difficult thing to do to take over a, something that had been white anted for a long period of time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, on the one side. On the other side, just wrong appointment for the time. I think what a new Attorney General must do is they have to have charisma and punch themselves to explain in 90-second blocks yes. why they will be doing hopefully some very big changes with the Supreme Court and just put it out there, boom, See, this is the thing with someone like Jack Smith. I don't doubt his legal capacity for a second. However, as a year of trials unfold, he's not going to say a word to the media during that time, which leaves a vacuum for everyone else to fill. True. This is a problem in the modern 24-hour cycle. So if you're a Jack Smith, you need to allocate your spokesperson. And if you're an attorney general who's tough as nails but you don't do the camera thing, then we should be seeing that spokesperson every day doing that. It is absolutely essential. And it's I'm worried be... that, that yeah. you know, to not have that is a big mistake. But I'm confident as a prosecutor she will prioritise the ultimate legal structure, surely. It's true. I mean, the, the only, the only uh, drawback to the strategy is that the Justice Department can't do anything about the courts. That has to go. That's a process in the House and in the Senate, which once again means if you were going to say something which actually is fair, if they said, you, know, you guys ripped us off for three judges, not one, not two, three judges, you ripped us off shamelessly, we need those judges back, but you need to uh, get rid of the filibuster and ram it through, potentially with a, with a uh, tied Senate. You're risking that if they regain those chambers, they will do it to you in a different way. You'll be in a tit for tat situation. So this is this is why Biden was so reluctant to take those measures because you know Biden, whatever you say about him, he's been in the Senate for decades. He knows the way these people think. Oh, and, I get you know, it. Right, I, I do get it. There's no point just suddenly putting 15 new justices on, right? That isn't the way to go. Fortunately, they've been busy night and day committing crimes. Yeah, that's true. So you can, probably, you can, you can go after so, them for that. So you go after them for that. And Sheldon Whitehouse has done a brilliant job. The dossiers are all prepared for Thomas and Alito. Did you remember that they actually... Um, submitted them to Congress, knowing there was no time before the election, knowing they didn't control Congress, to have it on the record. So that needs to happen. And then independently, an investigation, 
um, which isn't just political um, clapback. It's because the FBI failed to address the 4,000 <laughs> um, tips they were given. So there's a, a legal reason for doing it. That's what I mean about the person has to explain that. Now, in the you might say in the old days, it, you know, it wasn't a DOJ thing, whatever. It's the message and the message followed by the message. Look what Bill Barr, as Attorney General, did in two minutes after the Mueller report. Oh, yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And he messaged them. Okay. Yeah, so that's what they need, someone who can do that thing. I agree. I agree. I mean, the, the only, the, again, the only drawback I can think of as an immediate response is that situation is so partisan, so divided that any move that any side makes that is direct and straightforward is interpreted as you're do, using a power grab. Oh, and it will be. Back. It will be, yes. Yeah. So go for it. But it'll end up in reverse if they get in down the road as a major hunter Biden. They'll be looking for things that they but it doesn't actually fly. That. Whereas these guys, even though they've had huge leeway because there wasn't an ethics committee and there's no ethical rules. Right, uh, right. <laughs> so that whole argument has been lost. Yeah. But we're not talking about choosing to behave in this way or that way. We're talking out and out, old fashioned crimes. Correct. Yeah, hundred percent. I'm with you. It's. It's. I mean, this is. This has been the era where, whatever you want to point to, because it's Trump and this and that and the other thing. But so many fissures, so many problems in the system have been have been exposed. Where, you have this gridlock the because of all of this. Yeah. Exactly. It's. Yeah. It's. In, it's incredibly difficult, when two sides are pointing at each other. It's almost like a, a really bad divorce where. There's yeah. no, there's just no fairness anymore because it's all resentment and it's all revenge and so on. And, and uh, yeah, and all I can think of there. It's vibration, let's face it. And it's global, but it's a yes. very low vibration way to rule a powerful country. It's true. You 100%. know, to let it to have got to this stage. Um, and like I said, the genie's out of the bottle. It's not something you can just wish back together. And it shouldn't be. You know how it is. Something has to be taken apart to be rebuilt better. And it's just people want it all to be over, you know. Yeah, and I know. I, I mean, with In 100%. 10 days, they want it all to be over. It's like We've got to live through this chaos and tumult and be part of the change we want to see. You cannot be on the fence. One hundred percent. Yeah, and it going is going uh, forward. It's a hundred percent true. I, I'm with you a hundred percent. The only thing with that would be if you're saying, well, what in the heck? What what could bring that about? The, the honest truth is, I have no idea other than because of the way I channel energy <laughs> is that I I am hopeful. In the upcoming cycles, Pluto's getting out of Capricorn next month, goes into Aquarius for two decades. Saturn and Neptune get out of their out of Pisces and go into Aries. These are big changes in the collective, everyone, everywhere, not just here. And yes. and I think that the my understanding of those big moves is they tilt toward more uh, reasoning in people yeah. and less insanity. That's how I call it. But not right away necessarily because... No, no. No, because... And people it, have you know, to, to come to groups that were in the middle of a very gnarly time. Yes. And we can't collapse and just say, oh, it's all too hard, you know. But the upside is it's a long overdue reinvigoration. That, that's that's just it, yeah. But it's it's that it's that notion that you can only think of this as one step at a time. For example, Trump is very unlikely to lose and go away right away. Very unlikely, and I know that just from his Jupiter in his sign till the middle of next year. Very hard to, you know, people that are thinking, yeah, oh, you know, November seventh. Yeah, that's but, fine. It's a two-term loser then who's just whinging on the sidelines. Exactly, exactly. He's so not going to, to get any more interesting or captivating or 
Yes. Convert new people, right? So exactly. let me do that. Right. So like it's it's like what you're saying is one step at a time. Basically, first one step, step is go, close the door of the White House, then let's take the next step. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Before we talk about you know, one step at a time. He is a definite problem. There may be another equally awful cockroach waiting in the wings. We haven't seen him yet. So let's talk about the cockroach, JD Vance. That's have the... you got a birth time for him? I do. I have his chart. Uh, my sense of him is that he's gambling on the wrong horse. He's banking on being the successor to in the MAGA mm -hmm. movement. My feeling is at some point you'll be uh, fighting off someone who wants to take the Republican Party to a more a more balanced place. That's my feeling. But that could take two or even four years. I think his gamble is... Or anything. We don't know, you know, in that sense. It could true. be longer. Yeah, it's true. But the world hasn't got a lazy decade to throw away waiting for people to catch up. <laughs> That's why people need to be engaged. You know. You're right. You're right. And I mean, and I know that people, I know my channel, there are complaints. You probably see it too. This is exhausting. When is it going to be over? And you feel like saying, well, you know, it's over when it's over. <laughs> Hang in there. I mean, you know, this is, it's your life. It's your, it's your life. I mean, if you're a woman, is, is it not, isn't this the most immediate thing? I mean, even, even if you're not affected by the topic, you know, as a woman, you should be thinking, this is not good. This is just not good. I need to... No step in there and make my voice heard. And mm. you, you show up and you continue. It's, it's that simple. And the other thing I'd be encouraging is putting civics back in the classroom um, because it's obvious from interviews with MAGA, and I don't think it's just MAGA. There are millions of others who really don't understand five or six fundamental concepts of the Constitution yes, or Declaration true. of Independence. They just actually don't know. It's it true. just means I can have a gun and I can have a hundred guns. Awesome. Proud to be American. It's really got to lift from there. They can then mm -hmm. debate it on some level, mm -hmm. but they have to be made aware that the country was founded on the premise that people would be protected and able to explore any of their religious beliefs or to not have religious beliefs was part of the tenor of the founding documents. And they don't understand that. 100%. I mean, uh, it, it's, I mean, sometimes it feels like in the, and here, I don't know how it's like in Australia, because you're also complaining a little bit about, about Australia, so I'd be no. curious to hear. But here, sometimes I'm watching and I'm thinking, this is like watching a really, really bad B movie on Netflix, because it's so obvious, you know, you'll see people like Marjorie Taylor Greene saying that the founders wanted a Christian country. No, they didn't. Or guns, guns, guns. It says a well-regulated militia. And by the way, that's a militia. Never mind a well-regulated single gun for an individual. There is no constitutional pointer to owning firearms, but they say there is. And this would be like if you were in a classroom and you think, is this teacher demented? I'm reading the thing and he's telling me the opposite of what I'm reading. You know, when you're learning something, what does it say? What does the constitution yes. say? You know? Yes. So, yeah. <laughs> and it needs to be, and I'm not talking highbrow intellectual discourse here. <laughs> right. No, no, just what it says. Just what it says. <laughs> just let's look line by line. You know, what it says. What does that mean to you? What do you hear at home? What do you hear in your neighbourhood? Is it the same? Is it different? When is it different? Why is it? Di We're talking fundamental education. Yes. Yes. No. I I, I agree with you one hundred percent. Really basic stuff. You know. And by the way, that's another. It's one of the reasons why. I am. I used to actually think more like a Republican, and I am completely against them now because they are so so awful around this very topic. Where they will not, uh, they will not give in on the sense that what you said earlier, education is critical. You have a big country, educate people. That's how the country progresses. You don't go out of your way to block education so that people will get smart and be on to you. That's the wrong way to do things. Even if it, if you can succeed and make more money for a while, you're destroying the country. It's not a good idea. You know? I know. And
And I think we need to teach, and I'm saying this as an Australian as well, financial literacy, right? Yeah. So it, there's nothing to stop an 11 or 12-year-old or a 14-year-old or 16-year-old understanding better how money works, etc. So, for example, there's nothing to stop, I'd like to see in high schools, let's look at buying a new car let's look at the contract right <laughs> you know like do, do, do. because it's very enticing for people without financial literacy anything that lets you have something and walk away is magic so i can walk into this car yard i can drive out in a twenty-five thousand dollar car and no one looks that you're going to pay one hundred and sixty thousand dollars for that car <laughs> you know so use everyday experiences. Not that I think they have to become mini legal eagles to get the thrust of it. I, you I, know. I, I know 100%. But see, this is the thing, though, once again. This is like, a, you know, the line I heard Al Sharpton, other ones, where he said, you know, stop telling me about Republicans. He said it. The only party that has ever, ever brought anything progressive in is the Democratic Party. So... To your point, who was putting in the, I used to see the bills. You'd see a bill for your credit card and it would say, if you only pay the minimum, it will take you 45 years to pay this off. So then a yeah. person would say, that's a bad idea. But that was Elizabeth Warren because she was trying to protect the consumer. As soon as she's not there, let's take that away because they bank on you becoming enslaved by the money. The, the companies that lend it to you want you to, the, to not pay and pay them interest. Yeah. And so this is a major problem. I mean, I think you can be in business and not be a crook at the same time or not be so immoral as to take advantage of people that are less smart. Surely. Than you. Yeah, Surely. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. But that was the government, by the way, through through an individual, you know, whatever you say about her, maybe she doesn't understand macroeconomics as well as some great Republican you can think of. At least However, she's thinking. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. And so. then if you have that foundation of good education, you, over time you can lift the conversation on this issue and that issue and that issue. If people are scrabbling around really like feudal peasants in terms yeah. of being told what to think. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. It's very sad. No it is sad. It's true. It's, yeah. I mean, in a way, these, these things are what happens to empires, though, when the Romans were doing so well. And then you read about in the later stages, not, of course, a number of things happen and so on. But it's like the culture becomes too fond of uh, indulgence. And, you know, they were doing things like putting lead fillings in their food to make it look better. And someone would have told them, well, that's, really, that's a really bad idea. Everybody's <laughs> going to get sick. But, you know, the, the, the morals, everything goes out the window for appearances, for indulgence. And then the country suffers. It doesn't do as well. And, and you're in decline, right? But I don't know if America's reached that point. I still think there's hope. And, you know, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it, it, well, uh, we've got uh, to cling to that hope it might be a different conversation if everything goes south but this is a time and it can't just be oh phew dems have won no this is the beginning and that's what i want all our viewers to get to this is the beginning of the rebuild and it's yes. really important to be part of that rebuild because everyone has different interests and different skills so, but everyone can bring something to the table exactly to exactly. move it forward in their location or their world or with their community you know i agree with you i agree with you 100 percent. and you know what in, in that to if i could add anything more to that would be to say you know because the person hearing that will think wow oh, are you telling me that this means i'll be anxious for another so many years no no no, no the way you do it is you the way you do this is always cultivate your own calm because that allows you to know what to do next for yourself and for the country. You can't depend on outer circumstances to reflect your calm. Now, I realize, yes, of course, we're all going to be, we would all be super, super depressed if someone like Trump is elected. But in any situation, try to stay calm. 
so you can make your next move, whatever that is. And that's exactly it. Because if you're stressed and anxious and fearful, you don't make good decisions. 100%. And your health suffers and all kinds of things. Yeah, it actually has repercussions. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah. yeah, that's the bottom line. All right. Well, we've we've talked for an hour. and uh, Can you believe it? It's gone like that. But I don't think we've solved anything. What's our final... <laughs> <laughs> what's our takeaway what's our takeaway what do you think what what's your what's your summary <laughs> well i'd like one more thing i'd like to say about kamala that i think is massively important mm. she's apparently quite collegial in the sense she asks other people what's going on and i really hope that she keeps that up to you know she often asks staff what do you think about that how does that work you know would that affect your family if she can keep hold of that i think she can be uniquely placed in this time in history to make a magnificent difference oh are you there i am yeah <laughs> yeah no actually i i think the odds of that are very good yeah because in the final analysis, she's a Libra. Libra is the sign of relationship. Obama yeah. has his Leo son in the house of relationships. He's similar that way in that they are people that make alliances and they talk with other people and they, they work toward consensus. And it's a natural uh, tendency in her. And yet she has the moon on the other side of Aries. So she's also quite a leader as well. She'll make decisions. And yeah, so she's not a pushover. Exactly. It's not that he's asking people's opinions and then go, oh, okay. You know, no. Precisely, no. precisely. So absolutely. I think she has all the essential qualities in this time. I do, me. I do. And, I mean, for me, I keep saying this, the the summary for me, I've seen analysis where an astrologer will disagree with me. I'm just telling them Jupiter on the Ascendant, which is where it is for her, mm. is better than Jupiter. Well, it's in his sun sign, but it's opposing his moon. That's the problem he has, mm. that it opposes the moon. But even without the opposition, I would still take the ascendant Jupiter. That was Bill Clinton in 92 and Barack Obama in 08. There are moments when people really like you. They just connect with you. And I yes. have been talking about Kamala months and months, years even, saying she was the greatest asset to Joe Biden because I thought, well, if she's running with him, why are things so good in her chart? I had no idea that she would mm. be, you know become the front runner because Biden had to, you know. Well, also, um, the twin of that and our next conversation, we have to talk about Vance because one way or another, Tr Trump's not going to be there long physically in reality. He might be gone in a week, he might be gone in two years, but he's not going to be there in four years' time doing well, this. I'm amazed. Man, I'm amazed. I mean, he's... Uh... I am too. I because am too. He has the constitution of an ox, you know, on some level. No, a, a true, um, true. But he, he's definitely under uh, challenging health aspects, which, when they don't show up like that, they they manifest as as um, uh, not good energy, as energy that is uh, discordant and difficult and ma uh, misaligned and very unhelpful toward mm. what he's trying to do. But it's the kind mm. of thing where you can literally overnight be in terrible trouble with aspects like that and that's yes. what's going on so uh yeah i mean that that goes to the idea that many thought he wouldn't make the election now it's looking like he will but fortunately um vance doesn't appear to be someone who brings people into the fold no uh, he no, doesn't he... have trump's charisma no, he has the charisma. as it might be, it's nonetheless charisma. No, he has the charisma. And Vance doesn't it. have it. But that doesn't mean he can't mature into the role in opposition and be a threat, you know. So this is the beginning of having to counter Project 25 too. They can't just go, oh, we won, that's the end of that. No, pull out the juicy bits and run ad campaigns for the next two years on this because that gives you cover for making other laws you know, support women and stuff. So don't let it go. Don't let, you know. I agree. I totally agree. I agree 100%. I mean, it's a, uh, to be honest, I'm not surprised to see presidents age so 
noticeably because oh, who'd want it has job? to be it has oh, to be like yeah. uh, like you know it's like if, you, if your job was if you were told okay your job is you'll operate this tank in full combat it's not too stressful you know you'll get used to it <laughs> it's a very good analogy wow. <laughs> well you get a really good helmet you know and, uh, <laughs> it uh, could be worse you have cameras with it. right exactly so <laughs> all right that was that was fun as always I look forward to the next one. If you want to talk again soon, I'm definitely game. Maybe a little bit after the election where we can check in. Yeah, you... sure. I think we'll all need to debrief one way or another, you know, in the aftermath. Through. So, yeah, let's do it. All right. Okay. We'll say goodbye to everyone for now. Bye, everyone. Ciao.